Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So if you caught Saturday's video, I repaired that hydraulic cylinder trunnion head. And what it was was the, there, there are pins on the side of the cylinder head that it sits in bearings and it rides on that. Now, I had a lot of feedback on that, how I probably should have welded that up and repaired it. Well, no, no, I will not ever do that. Um, the, that introduces new stresses into the material and creates potential brittle points and fracture points. In the last 25 years I've been in this industry doing this kind of work, I have seen about a dozen of those in total come in snapped off um, because they were welded. And I've done over a hundred of them where we've just taken a little bit off, shrunk, you know, heated up and slipped on a bushing and then machined that bushing like I did in Saturday's video. I have never had one come back broken, not one. I've had them come back wore out where we've had to re redo them, um, but never had one snap off. So that is really a, a good way to do it, a safe way to do it. Um, something that small, that's not a high pressure point. My guess on that cylinder is that's more of a, it's a positioning thing. So it allows it to rock back and forth, but they're not putting a lot of force, it's maybe maybe moving an arm or it's moving a pin into place or something. It's not really, my experience with that kind of stuff, it's not doing any real work. Now, if it was doing real work, it would be a much larger trunnion pin on there. So again, I, I've seen it both ways, done both ways, and I've seen the damage that happens from weld buildup on those. So I, that's something I'll never do. Turn it down just a little bit, just enough. Uh, sweat that on, the bushing on there, and then finish machine it. And that has worked 100% perfectly every time for me. Now there was a lot of good questions and comments in that video, and one of them was is why have I been using the Monarch lathe a lot more lately? Well, there's a reason for that. And <laughs> it's not that the Lion is not a good lathe. It is an amazing lathe, and I love that thing. The problem is, is it has been set up with bigger jobs for the last month and I haven't been filming any of those jobs because they're kind of proprietary but I'm also doing a little experiment and that experiment is finding out if I still need my little monarch um, I've had this machine this is the very first machine I bought when I started my shop uh, back in well actually I bought it before I started my shop uh, I had this back in 2004 and then I built the building in 06 and I went in full time in the shop here in 2012. So I've had this, this is the very first machine that I've purchased, this and the one bridge port over there. But it's tired, it's, it's got wear on it, it's not the tightest machine anymore. It still does good work, um, but you gotta know what you're doing and that's with any old machine that's wore out. Um, it still does great work, I, I do a lot of work on it, but I'm trying to determine whether or not all the work that I do on this lathe can be done on the 18 inch Monarch instead. One of the big reasons too is it's shorter. I would have to raise it up. Um, I bend over a lot to do this. That lathe is taller. It's a bigger swing. It's got everything going for it. It's a very smooth machine. Um, and the 18 inch is one that I plan on keeping anyway. So I'm just doing the experiment to see if I can actually justify letting this machine go. So if anybody's interested, this, this machine may be coming up for sale in the next couple of months. I'm, I'm still toying with the idea because, you know, sentimental value, I, this is the very first lathe I ever bought. So I, I love the Monarchs, they're a great machine, but it may be time for it to find a new home. So I will do a video when I am ready to, to let it go and somebody that's interested one of my viewers, I'm hoping one of you will take this lathe. It's, it's a great machine, um, but just it give me time. I gotta, gotta get, you know, my, <laughs> my emotional attachment has to be severed first. Um, I, I still love this little machine. I've been, a, been through a lot. This, this lathe and I have been through a lot of stuff together. Um, but anyway, so that's what's going on there. I'm not using the Lion because it's doing other bigger jobs. I'm doing the experiment, so I've been running the bigger Monarch a lot more just to make sure that I can justify getting rid of this at some point. So that's what's going on there. 
And as you can see here in the high bay, it's a lot brighter. We've added some lights in here like I did over in the low bay here a few weeks ago. Um, I'm going to be adding more in here, but it has definitely helped. Um, it's helped me with my visibility. Um, right now, as you can see, the, the Lion does not have a job in it. I actually just finished a job and I'm going to be throwing another one up there real soon here. So um, that I can't film either, unfortunately. Um, we're, we're starting to get to the point where my con I'm starting to run out of some content because I've got so many jobs that I can't film, but I'm working on some that I can. Um, we've been doing a lot of upgrades here in the shop. Uh, one of those upgrades is the digital readout added to the Mori vertical shaper. So that has been an amazing upgrade. Um, I just did the first job on this with using the digital readout and boy did that help. Um, I didn't have to worry about bumping my indicators. A lot of things really improved on with adding that, that digital readout. So I'm very happy I did that. Um, and that came about because one of the encoders on the Lucas boring mill finally died. Um, after 10 years of in-service use, one of the machine DRO encoders died on me. Not a big deal. So I ordered up everything to replace that encoder, add the third axis to the boring mill, and then I ordered up everything to set this machine up. So I took the two axis readout off the boring mill, moved it over here to the, to the slaughter, put the three axis readout on the, the boring mill, and just a big upgrade in here altogether. So uh, very happy with that. And I know a lot of you have commented on Anchor Lube, how I really kind of push that stuff. I have really switched over almost 100% to using Anchor Lube, except for in the Lion Lathe where I'm still running my flood coolant. But I've been experimenting with the Anchor Lube and there's gonna be some, some talk of that coming up, but I have been thinning it so very thin to a consistency that I can use, run it through the cool mist and spray it. And so far I am extremely impressed. Um, I just did a slot on the slaughter here just the other day, finished that job up. It was kind of a rush and boy, did that cut nice. So I'm very happy with the anchor lube and my experiments with thinning it have been amazing. So I'm just, I've switched exclusively to that with the exception of the flood coolant and the lion. Um, very happy with that product all around. It's just so much cleaner in the shop. Um, I'm not generating smoke from oil and things like that. So much happier with that. So we got a lot of things coming up, a lot of cool videos I'm working on yet, more projects. Uh, I got the cylinder for the steam engine, my steam engine sitting over here on a pallet that we're gonna bore. Um, I got a few other things in the works, but lots of cool stuff coming. And the 100,000 subscriber, giveaway contest. We are gonna do a contest coming up. I don't know when, I'm working on the details, getting everything in line, um, but we are gonna do a contest, so we're gonna do a video on that, so stay tuned for that. And until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.